Yo, what's good guys? This is Theo here and in this video I am going to show you how to build out the voting application from FreeCodeCamp. If I can bring it up. This is under the backend uh, dynamic web application projects. We're going to build these user stories. I'm probably going to build this into three or four videos. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. In this video we're mainly going to build out our server. So I'm going to go ahead and change the directory to my desktop and make a directory called FCC voting application. I'm going to change directory into there. We'll start building out our file structure. So I'm going to make a directory called public to serve our public and client folder or client um, files. I'm going to touch a server, which is a JavaScript file, which will house our server side code. So we're going to touch a package.json, which is going to information about the node modules we're using. I'm going to run npm init y to generate our package.json with the default settings. From there, I um, also like to make a directory called routes, make a directory called models, change directory into my public folder, and I'm going to touch a index.html file. I'm also going to touch a app.js. I'm going to make a directory called templates for our views. And then I think that's about all we need. So I'm going to open it with Sublime as the binding. Use this as my text editor. And I'm going to go about installing the node modules we need. So I'm going to explain all of these. I'm going to first install Express, which is going to be used for our web framework, which sits on top of Node.js and provides us with middleware, HTTP, routing, and uh, Lot of other functionality we can plug into our application. I'm going to use Mongoose, which acts as a wrapper um, into um, the connection to MongoDB, uh, and it facilitates uh, queries by extending the functionality of you know what we can sort of do. We can also create schemas. Um, I'm going to install Body Parser, which is going to take the data from a post request and add it on as a object um, to the request object that Express will hand us back from our router. I'm going to install Morgan, which is a HTTP logger, which is going to log information about our request. I'm going to install um, JSON web token. This is a node module that is going to allow us to verify, decode, and sign web tokens that we can uh, either pass back to the client or let the client know as a uh, sort of response from a server that they are authenticated or they are not authenticated. I'm going to install Angular JWT, which is a client side Angular module or client side JavaScript web token that is an Angular module. And this is going to allow us to decode a JavaScript web token and extract user information that is being passed from our database to our API to our client side um, JavaScript code. I also would like to install bcrypt, Node.js. bcrypt is an encryption node module that allows us to hash and salt our passwords so we do not store plain text in our um, password uh, field in the database, and this is good for security reasons, obviously. Um, this is two-way encryption in that bcrypt can also decrypt our, or de-encode our passwords. Decode. Um, and finally, I want to install .env. And so some of you guys were asking me last time if you were supposed to store the secret, um, you know, right there in code. Actually, you're supposed to store it as an environment variable. So if you've ever seen me write process.environment.port, uh, the port is coming from in a production uh, server. It's probably coming from the configuration of a cloud provider. And let me take that out real quick. Let me go back there. And so by adding .env, it's going to lo load in our variables from a .env file we have here and allow us to have access to them throughout our application. So with all of that exp explained, I'm going to save these and let these load up for me. 
fetching them from the npm js registry and there they all go cool so we have all the stuff in here all right so let's go ahead and build out our server so i'm going to write some comments for you guys i'm going to load in node modules so what i want to do i want to load in express I would like to load in Morgan. I would like to load in Mongoose. Of course, we're going to load in our body parser. And then we're going to load in the .env just going to load our environment variables and where I do this I'm going to call this load in environment variables so I'll say dot env say dot config and this takes in an object and we can pass it a key of verbose and a value of true and this will give us more logging information so at the root of our application we'll create this dot env file and I will just say FCC is our, or I'll say secret as our process.environment.secret, and we'll say free code camp. Okay. Um, next up, I would like to connect to, to Mongo. So what I need to do actually up here, I want to create a db connection string. So I'm going to say rdb. I'm going to say mongodb localhost 27017 because that's the port that the Mongo server is listening on. And we're going to say free code camp voting as our uh, connection string. And then I'm going to create a port for server to listen on. So I'm going to save our port. We set that equal to process.environment.port or 8000. Okay, so in production this would be set, but this is going to default to 8000 because we're in development. Let's go ahead and connect to Mongo. So Mongoose provides us with a connect method, and the first parameter is the database, the connection string. The second parameter is a function which if there is an error, it will hand that to us. So we'll say if there's an error, let's go ahead and log out error. Otherwise, let's sort of tie into some of these. Um, listen to Mongoose connection events. So these are event emitters from Mongoose. So mongoose.connection.on. So when it's connected, this is going to fire this function. And we'll say console.log successfully opened a connection to plus db. Next up, we're going to listen to the disconnect event dot on dis, sorry, disconnected. And this function is going to fire. So we'll say console.log successfully disconnected disconnected from plus db and we have one more mongoose connection event emitter we can tie into and we'll say mongoose.connection dot on error let this function fire that be called and we'll say console.log an error has occurred connecting to plus db. All right, now it's time to configure some of our middleware. Express middleware. But before I get ahead of myself, we actually need to create an express application. 
So to do that, I will say var app, say express. So by invoking this as a function, we are exporting the top level uh, function, um, which is going to then allow us to use the middleware that comes with express. Okay, so we'll say app dot use. Okay, first we're going to say Morgan. We want to use Morgan in the development mode, which again it's a HTTP logger. Next up, I want to plug in my body parser. So I'm going to say body parser, and we'd like to parse it into JSON. But also like to use body parser URL encoded, and this takes in an object with a key of extended. And we'll say false because we don't want any extra data coming from our URL. I would also like to um, use Express's middleware static, which allows us to set a specific directory name to serve our files from. We're going to say this is our public directory, and this will start our app from public index.html if we don't default it elsewhere. Also going to set a route up front. This, this star means everything. So no matter what route they go to, so take in a request and a response that's handed back to us from Express. And I would like to use the send file method that's provided to us from Express, pass it in the global name, global um, from node of their name, and send this to public index.html. The reason behind this is because we've set the root as public, this is okay for index.html or whatever we have configured as our root with Angular. But if you were to try and go to slash register slash login or whatever route is in the main route, you'll be able to go there for the first time. But if you try and refresh it, and if you don't have this express, we'll think um, that it's still doing the routing because if you don't have a route for that, you will get a cannot get whatever the route you're trying to go to. Finally, Let's go ahead and start up our server. So to do this, we will call app.listen. We'll pass in the port. We'll pass in an optional callback function that will be invoked when our port is being listened to or listened on. And we'll say listening on plus port. Finally, one last thing I want to do in our .env file, I want to make sure our node module is working. So I just want to console.log process.environment.secret. Okay. Uh, with all of that, our server should work. I'd want to stub out some boilerplate code here in our index.html. So we'll say free code camp voting application. And inside of here, I'm going to say FCC voting app. Um, I need to do two more things. I need to start the Mongo server. So I'm going to run that as the super user. Enter my password. Here it is. It's listening on port 27017. Here's where the data is being stored. Um, I'm going to open up the Mongo shell as well. Here we go. Show DBs. I got all my DBs there. Now, if I go ahead and run nodemon, which is going to listen for changes and restart our server at the entry point of our application, server.js, and hit enter, here it goes. FCC, that's our secret, and it's listening on port 8000 just to prove that this is indeed working. Um, let me change this to some random uh, letters, and let me save our, let me go back. Let me um, save our file again, and we can see it. There you go. Our secret is indeed being loaded in there. Okay, and just for a good measure, let's go ahead and reload here. FCC voting app, that's working. Okay, cool. Um, so I'd like to, let's see. I think, yeah, that's about it for this video setting up our server. See you guys in the next video. Again, this is probably going to be a four or five uh, part series. I really want to try and explain everything to you guys that I know about the mean stack and break everything down. <coughs> break everything down. 
from the server side code to the client side client side code to the database code, um, really everything that I'm doing. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, stay tuned for part two, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a great day.